Hi there. It's my first question tonight. You can answer inside of your head or raise your hand if you'd like to. What movie or song always makes you emotional? I can't think of a movie, but uh, because I got a bad memory. Um, and any movie reference I've had, I'd have you guys wouldn't know because I'm old now. <laughs> but uh, I remember uh, you guys ever play sports, yeah. like uh, for whatever. Uh, do do people still listen to music before you play sports? So like, what made me emotional was listening to ACDC before playing hockey. Because that was what we listened to back then, and a little bit of Motley Crue. That was in the locker room. One of my neighbors, that you would never guess if you knew him, he told me last week, sitting in the neighbor's shop, he said that on his DVR, he DVRs all of these Christmas movies off the Hallmark Channel. And this is somebody that you would never, ever think would be someone that does that. The super funny construction guy. But uh, he's one of those guys that if he says that, nobody will make fun of him. <laughs> Just kind of funny. So you can kind of get some emotional feelings seeing uh, like triple, those Christmas movies some people like and things of that nature. Um, so some movies, songs, or TV shows can really bring out emotions, can't they? Usually emotions are a response to the shows and those can be tied to something deeper in our memory or something else as well. So Jesus, as being fully God, fully man, two natures, one person, he experienced emotions. He uh, wept at the friend, death of his friend Lazarus, and he also uh, experienced joy. And uh, so that's an example of God's love. And God's love is not changed through a person's sin. We see the love of God revealed to us through the story that we've been following the last few weeks of the prodigal son and the father's story. The father is emotional, and when he sees his son, he responds. And that uh, story about the father and the story is Jesus is talking about the love that God the father has for us, and that we also learn how we should respond to others and how our own family might, members might emotionally respond to how we express our emotions. So just a reminder, when talking about the story of the prodigal son, I'm going to read what happened when he decided to come home after being broke, experiencing famine, not having any food or anything going on. It says, now the older brother had been out in the field on his way back. He heard the sound of music and dancing. He called one of his, the servants and asked what this might mean. The servant said to him, your brother has returned and your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. He became angry and when he refused to enter the house, the father came out and pleaded with him. He said to his father, reply, look all these years I served you and not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a young goat to feast on with my friends. But when your son returned, you swallowed up your property with prostitutes for him to slaughter the fat and calf. He said to him, my son, you are here with me always. Everything I have is yours. But now we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead and has come to life again. He was lost and has been found. So the father in this story is really the person who is the main character, the parable is it necessarily about the prodigal son or his brother? And with, 
or even the famine. And all those pieces are there to show us who the Father is and show us the Father's love for his Son. As Jesus uh, shows the Father's love for him and the Father's love for us. And God the Father is, the, is generous and he gives us free will in the hopes that we choose to love him in return for, our, for his love for us. And Jesus welcomes us many times in the Gospels to bring our prayers to our loving Father, and he will answer them according to his will. And God welcomes us back home when we've uh, been away, and even when we don't deserve it, God gives us unique blessings. And when the younger son returned home with nothing, the father could have rejected him to say, you're an idiot, you wasted all this money, you got no food, you got nothing going, now you're coming back to me, get out of here. He didn't do that, he embraced him, with compassion and love and accepting him right back home. And uh, it's, the Gospel of Luke, as part of it says, it says, uh, while the prodigal son was still a long way off, his father caught sight of him and was filled with compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. The father noticed the son coming back with it from a distance. And um, it means the father was looking for that younger son to come back home, and God never stops seeking us. We hear that with Jesus' parable when uh, the shepherd who has a hundred sheep lost one, went through a ton of work to find that lost sheep and brought it right back home. The God the Father is searching for us, and when we walk away, God wants to restore our relationship with him, and he runs to meet us when we return back to him. Here's, some, here's a question I thought was interesting, and I never noticed this. Did you notice that the father in Jesus' story throws a feast in the middle of a famine? Never thought about that. And we can sometimes put limits on what we think God can do in challenging moments, but God wants to do good things for us because he loves us, and God wants us to throw... He wants to throw us a feast within during a famine. There's good things God can do in all seasons in our lives, and we just need to be able to recognize them. So sometimes a way to recognize the good thing God does for us is maybe think of something during the day that happened at night, when we go to bed at night and thank God for something good that happened during the day. And last question. Have you experienced any feast or famine moments during the COVID-19 pandemic? Feast meaning good things, famine meaning possibly negative. I'm sure we all have. So imagine you're at a really good party, the best party ever. What you want people who cared about, who you cared about to be there so they can enjoy it with you. If you could change the world, you could invite everyone you could by sharing God's love with everyone and we're inviting them to the feast and the famine, knowing God the Father, loving him, praying, and uh, enjoying the joy that only God can bring us through doing his will and the right thing. So let us pray. Tonight we gather in prayer to ask you to give us strength and wisdom to share our faith. Help us to share our faith with at least one person this week by praying or reading scripture with them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yes, I still have some more time.